Hey, it's Tosty Fresh, and welcome back to my little gaming corner that uh, some of you may have visited before. If not, welcome. And it's going to be another update video, and this time it's on uh, the stuff that I actually got for Christmas. Uh, presents off friends and family and just little bits and bobs that I got along with uh, other presents and uh, Also, a bit, we got a bit of merchandise this time and that's uh, this t-shirt that my beautiful girlfriend got me which is a Super Mario one so Showing you know, I love all All uh, consoles and things like that Nintendo I'd say probably if I'm gonna narrow it down to favorite two consoles, it's probably gonna be the PlayStation One and Two. But uh, no mistake, I still love Nintendo. Still was the first real console that I co-owned with my brother. So I got a lot of love for Mario as well. So I was very pleased to get that. Uh, thought that was a very thoughtful present as well for my girlfriend. She went out because she complained. She said, "Oh, you know, you need to get new clothes. Stop buying games. You need clothes." So she kind of went. Met me in the middle with that one and got me this. And uh, I'm going to stop waffling and I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, what kind of stuff I got uh, off people. And uh, first up, it was my mum. And the first one, maybe typical mum buying of uh, Christmas presents. And she got me this one uh, Mahjong Magic Swift Classics. And. Uh, <laughs> I do know what Mahjong is, it's kind of, it's um, it's Domino's basically, it's Chinese version of Domino's, it's been around for a long, long time, and uh, also known as the, uh, it's known as the Heavenly Tiles to a lot of Chinese, it's kind of a thing they like to gamble with, same as Domino's, a lot of people gamble with Domino's and Dice, they uh, gamble with these, where you've got various symbols and things like that, you've got to match up. I don't know exactly the full rules on it, but uh, I got that one. That was a, a weird one. I don't know. I don't know why she bought me that. Maybe because she thinks I'm into, you know, I'm into Far Eastern and Chinese, Japanese culture, that kind of thing. And uh, no, I got kind of get a bit of something out of that. So I don't know if I'll play it, but uh, I suppose it's something to do if I run out of games. Uh, she also got me this one. Uh, I think it's pronounced Daemon. Daemon Summoner. And uh, this one, I don't have it, so it's okay. And like I said, my mum, she knows absolutely nothing about games. Nintendo, Sony, Microsoft, it, you know, it's all the same to her. And uh, it's set in Victorian England. Uh, your child's been murdered. Your wife's disappeared and turned into a vampire. And you got to go and uh, find, find her and save her. Her uh, immortal soul, apparently. And uh, it's kind of like, looks like a first person shooter. I don't know how good the picture will be on my, the potato that I'm recording on. But uh, it's a King Edward, so you might just about see. Um, yeah, but it seems okay. A budget title made by Midas, who make a lot of budget titles. But there's nothing saying that some of those can't be quite fun to play. Like I've already got uh, battle construction vehicles up there somewhere. You can't see on the shot that's going to be on this camera but up there there's a shelf full of PlayStation 2 games and battle construction vehicles is in there somewhere and that's a fun little uh, budget game and the last one I got off my mum I only got three and the rest of it was like claws and things like that I got a uh, Animusha Warlords on a uh, Platinum which not too keen on Platinums but uh, it is complete though so I'll give it that I'm not really played much of Animusha it's, I know it's kind of like uh, Devil May Cry slash Resident Evil. Uh, you hack and slash and things like that. You upgrade your swords and stuff. You get souls. So kind of maybe a little bit like um, God of War as well. But uh, the same kind of controls and camera angles as Resident Evil as I remember. Because my brother had the very first one, which I haven't got. I've got this, Warlords, which I don't know which one this is in the series. And I've got the second one up there in my big pile of games. Uh, but I've only ever seen the first one. So, and I'm assuming that's going back to the original character in the first one. So this might be the third in the series. But uh, that's what I got off my mum. And now going on to my loving family. My little girl and my girlfriend got me the rest of the games. And 
some of them I kind of, some of them I did order myself. Like the last, the last one I'm going to show you, game of the, game of the game is the one that I ordered, and then I wrapped it up <coughs> just to keep the illusion of Christmas for my little girl. And uh, the first one they got me though was uh, Eternal Ring because you know I'm into the kind of uh, fancy and RPG games and things like that. Uh, sadly, it doesn't have an instruction booklet, but uh, it's made by Crave, so it might not be too bad because they are involved with publishing or whatever in a fair few underrated games. Uh, so it could be that it's alright. I think it did get panned when it came out, but uh, you never know. Sometimes you can't get fun out of it. But they've aimed pretty high to be going after uh, Square, where with the back of it it says. Uh, who says fan, uh, fantasies have to be final? So, and I doubt it's going to be a final fantasy. But you never know, it could be fun. And all the others are pretty good. I mean, that's one that I'm not too sure about. But uh, i got Deus Ex, which is a classic, classic game. Uh, action slash uh, RPG. And just a pivotal game. Uh, probably this one, game which I've never played, I've played a little bit of Invisible War, but I've never played the first one. Or if I have, I've just played like the opening level or something. Um, it kind of opened up for the idea of all the games that have come after, like Mass Effect, I'd probably say, because that's kind of the same thing. The speech that I saw in it, and the speech options and things like that, opened it up to having an actual action parts to it as well where you can shoot you know you're having a first person shooter slash similar to what mass effect is and i, I really enjoy mass effect so if this is a precursor to mass effect then it'll be really good but again it's another one of those games i haven't really looked at and it's got a big uh idos catalog in it showing a lot of games but i don't have time to go through all that with you because i've got quite a few games to show you so that's that and another one that I used to own that I'm now happy to get back into my possession. Again, I'm going to say that one's mint as well. Absolutely amazing condition of the case. And another one that's similar, and that's uh, Summoner 2. I already have Summoner again as well up there somewhere. I think I don't have the instruction book up there for that, but this is complete. And it was another good game. I thought it was okay. It's a bit of a departure from the first one. It doesn't control exactly the same. It's more live action, uh, where you actually, um, you know, button bashing and hitting, whereas the other one where you just had to press directional buttons to carry on your chain combo, but the attacks happened automatic, whereas this is, uh, I think it was more you just bashing the button or whatever to do the attacks. More like a third person uh, hack and slash. Also, the summons were a little bit different. In the first one, the summons were added to your party, and they lasted for so long and then they disappeared. In this, it's more like uh, The Suffering, where you turn into the summon. Uh, the summoner on, in this one, this woman, I forgot her name, uh, she actually becomes uh, the summon. And it lasts for so long and then it goes and you've got whatever abilities that summon has for that amount of time. And another game, a lot of these I haven't played, uh, Shadow of Rome. I've not played this. But it's, uh, you're in a coliseum, fighting tigers, racing chariots, uh, lots of blood, uh, and death, and destruction. And you know what it was like in them days, maybe even orgies. So, all in all, it should be a good game, if it's anything like that. It's made by Capcom as well, who did um, Total Warrior Spartan, I think, or whatever it's called. Something like that. And that was a pretty decent game, set as a... You're playing as a Spartan. But it's fast and loose with actual history. But uh, I think the fighting mechanic wasn't too bad. And it wasn't really easy. It wasn't just like a attack and slack. You actually had to defend and counter and things. So if that's the same. It could be a pretty good and fun game to play. And another one I've got is uh, Urban Chaos. Riot Response. Again that is complete. And that is a good game. I've heard good things, I think, about it. I think it does have a good standing in uh, the world of gaming. I've never played it. You uh, you play as an, uh, 
a riot police guy and the city's gone crazy, hence urban chaos. And uh, I think you've got to work in tandem with like firefighters and paramedics and things like that to slowly try and retake control of the city. I think that's how it works with like um, power saw wielding maniacs. Uh, but it sounds really good. And I was actually in game after Chris uh, in Entertainment Exchange after Christmas, and there was a guy in a in a shop with his mate, and he was talking about games and commenting on a few of the games. And I was looking, and he went, "I've actually come in here expressly for a game." And he went, and I was looking for, and he said, "Urban Chaos Riot Response." And I just turned around to him for some reason, and I said, "Oh, sorry, bro. I think my girlfriend came in and bought that on Christmas Eve," and he was just like, "Okay." Thanks for uh, butting in on my conversation there, but uh, he didn't really know what to say and just turned away and started looking at games again. So I carried on and bought another pile of games. But yeah, I'm looking forward to playing it because I think it might be quite good. And another game I'm really looking forward to playing, and I know I've got a lot of these now, and another great RPG, uh, The Bard's Tale. Uh, so my girlfriend and my little girl have... Uh, some good taste, because I've seen this on the Steam sale as well, and I was going to get it on Steam, uh, because it had really good reviews, and that's complete. And it's a kind of a great one, because it's got that kind of humour to it, it's not taking itself serious. It's a bit of a send-up of a lot of RPGs, and things like that. Like it says, the main character is uh, on more of a quest for coin and cleavage, rather than being the big hero who's saving the day. And you do get the option to either be a troll, you know, troll people or be the um, goody two shoes as uh, the film Army of Darkness. I'll take a quote from there. Uh, you can either be the goody two shoes hero or you can be more of an anti hero. Uh, I don't know if it's an out and out bad guy, but you can just be more on a slant of someone who's just out for themselves kind of thing. So it looks like a good game, one that's more knowing and it's got a bit of humour to it. And I always enjoy those type of games. And now. Uh, just to throw in a different story and to show that I am all inclusive with uh, my consoles and things like that. Uh, she also got me, because she knows I like collector's editions as well, she got me uh, Gears of War, the first one, the uh, collector's edition, which comes in this nice big collector's tin uh, with pictures on it and everything like that. And I like them when they're more of an actual collector's item like this where you get something with it like because this comes in you get a little another sleeve and uh, that's got the game and the uh, bonus cd or dvd you also get a book uh, destroy beauty that's a look at the game and showed how they made it and uh, how they designed all the characters and things like that it's got quotes from sun Tzu and uh just all the levels and enemies and wow, where they got the inspirations from I think and things like that. It's also got the uh, instruction booklet and I've got an Xbox 48 hour trial for Xbox Live still in there and still uh, not claimed. So that's cool. And the Xbox, it's an interesting one for me because I've never played Gears of War. Um, and it was never a game to make me go out and want to buy the Xbox 360. I'm kind of I'm not too into shooters massively into them so and I've not played a lot of exclusives for the Xbox 360 to be honest because it's not the console that I am most used to playing uh, I never got one and my girlfriend's got one but she was used to playing her games on it so when she was on hers I was on the PlayStation 3 so I missed a lot of them like there's some that I wouldn't mind playing like Blue Dragon and RPG it looks quite fun and uh, Lost Odyssey it's the makers of Final Fantasy, I think. Uh, so that would be a cool game to play. But I'm now going on to my two favourite games of the whole bunch, what I got for Christmas. And the first one, we're going back to PlayStation. And I'm going way, way back, all the way to the PlayStation 1. And it's Warhammer Shadow of the Horned Rat. Which is, these two I kind of ordered for myself. So, no wonder they're going to be the favourites. Because uh, if you want a job doing, you've got to do it best. You gotta do it yourself. That's just the front uh, thing. That's the instruction booklet, which is a cool instruction booklet and actually helps with the game. And they're starting to die out those instruction booklets now, where you actually get things inside them. That's got a lot of uh, little bits of humour to it as well. 
and uh, that's the CD. <coughs> the case isn't the best. It has been cracked a little bit, but if I get another game, I'll probably swap that. Because it's getting increasingly rare, I think, to see this game in the wild. And I got it for $3.99 off eBay, plus postage uh, added on to that as well. But uh, I was really happy to get my hands on that, because I used to have it, but I used to have it just as a CD that I got my brother got from a friend of his. And it was just in my CD wallet, my PlayStation CD wallet, along with a lot of my... Uh, copied games and things like that but it's a really good game and really hard as well it's probably one of the hardest strategy games that was brought out for the uh, PS1 I'd probably say that I'd say I don't know if anyone wants to debate on that if you've got your thoughts on it and if you've ever played any of the Warhammer games then uh, feel free to comment I've only played this one I've seen somebody play through do a let's play on uh, YouTube of Dark Omen as well for the PlayStation 1 but never played that one myself and I only did that because I couldn't find a full length let's play of this. Otherwise, I would have watched that. They were part way through, but maybe that's because it's that hard when you get onto it. Because it, it is really hard. It's not like the usual strategy game. You get so many men and that's it. That's what you've got. There's no building forts, building stuff like in Populous and Command and Conquer and Warcraft. Things like that. And it's a lot more strategy involved in it, and it's a lot. It gets the. I think they toned down the difficulty for Dark Omen as well. This one was a lot harder, as I recall. Uh, but I'm looking forward to playing it. But that's the mark of a decent this game. It was really hard, and I wasn't really that good at it back when I was younger, because I only played it when I was young. Maybe that's one of the reasons I've got it, memories of it being a really hard game, but. Um, I still liked it though, I still loved it, and partly it's because of the lore in the game, and there was a lot of things to do, there was a beast area that you could read on all the enemies, and all your troops that you could get, and things like that, and it was just interesting, you could just read through that stuff as well, and that took you quite a long time, but I'm going on to my actual favourite game, and it's going to be, I'm going to be harsh, and do just one game, and the game of the video has got to be Dark Cloud. For the ps2 and it doesn't cost you a hell of a lot of money i remember saying on uh, twitter a while ago i was like oh i really want to get that game again and this someone was like oh it's not that much money but um i just never got around to getting it and finally i did i saw my opportunity at christmas and i thought yes that's what i'm getting for christmas and it's complete it's got everything it's even got the little uh, advertisement for the dual shock 2 and for the memory card at the back as well and I really have fond memories of this game because this was one of them that it was the first game for the PS2 that I was really anticipating and I, I couldn't wait to come out. I was waiting for it since launch and all the promises, all the, how they bigged it up and said, oh, you're going to be able to do this and that and uh, create all worlds and towns and landscapes and things like that they said all these things that you're going to do with it the power of the playstation 2 and all this lot and uh it did get really over kind of like fable for the xbox and it didn't quite live up to that and that's why it kind of maybe didn't it got marred a little bit plus not just that it got set up as an um playstation's answer to zelda and as a Zelda beta kind of thing, they said, is this going to be a Zelda beta? And they were going to say, this is going to line up alongside Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask as a uh, adventure RPG, you know, a great. And it was a little bit unfair uh, that it got all this pressure heaped on it and the main character got uh, scrutinised against Link. And uh, things like that, saying he's just a Link clone. Some of that was a little bit unfair, but underneath all that, it is still a really fun game. It was innovative. They mixed a few ideas together of an RPG, uh, dungeon crawler, <clears throat> and town planner and builder. Oh, you had to rebuild the little towns and things like that. And I thought it was a really fun game and a sweet game as well. It was a game that kids... As well, could play anyone. Anybody could play this. Um, 
it was you know family friendly as well which just goes to show you know with me it hasn't been a game that's adult themed that uh, has been one of my favorite games of all time uh, it was very family friendly as well but i just have great memories of playing through this spending hours playing through it until i completed it and i'm going to really really enjoy going back and uh, playing it again <coughs> I do have Dark Cloud 2 as well, but that's an American edition. So I'm going to have to play it through an emulator if I do actually play the copy. So we'd have to see about that. But yeah, that was my favourite game that I got for Christmas. So <clears throat> I'd be interested to see uh, what you got for Christmas. If you got any games or anything like that. I'd be interested to hear from you or what you thought of my games. Um, whether you thought they were good and uh, anything like that just any thoughts really but uh, that's all i got time for and i hope you had a happy christmas got some decent games and things like that but that's all i got time for and i'll see you guys uh later